What's up, Airbnb Nation? I'm Danny, and you're watching my review and tutorial of Beyond Pricing. I'm gonna go through the dashboard. I'll go through how to add a listing and connect your account, how to add users on that account. And we'll go through, uh, in the back end, each individual listing has their own calendar and statistics. We're gonna go through all of that, and then at the end, I've got a little special promotion for you all if you wanna give it a try. Now, Beyond Pricing was the original smart pricer. The original, it was even in existence before Airbnb's smart pricing. And I know that because when I was using Beyond Pricing at the time in 2015, I was working for an Airbnb property management company and Airbnb was about to roll out their own smart pricing. And I remember talking with the founder of Beyond Pricing and he wasn't worried at all. He said that Airbnb is not specializing in pricing. They're specializing in short-term accommodations and matching a host with a guest. And he said, so he's not worried. We're the experts. We're going to be better. And it turned out to be flawless uh, foresight because they, they, they were better at the time and uh, they still are better. Well, when you compare anything to Airbnb smart pricing, though smart pricing is getting better. When you compare any of the, the major third-party pricing softwares to Airbnb smart pricing, they are better. So what you're looking at now is the Beyond Pricing dashboard. This is what you'll get if you already have an account. It's quite easy. Let's just go over that first. When you first sign in here, they'll have you do this actually right away. You can connect to Airbnb or HomeAway VRBO, and you just enter your username and password and bam, the, they're already, they're loaded and it's quick. So I've already got my account loaded here. I'll just mention this video isn't about coronavirus, but they've been sending out some really awesome emails over the past few weeks, maybe months about coronavirus, looking at booking rates and cancellation rates and, and helping you get ready for when things come back. Now, I just will show you what this page looks like. I'll include a link to it in the description, but this video, this review is not for coronavirus, but here you can see it's, it's quite nicely laid out cancellations by date based on where you're at. You can actually click your own market here and they'll add another line to all these charts here like they have here. So let's go back to the dashboard though. And I'm first gonna go over what, oh, by the way, what is Beyond Pricing? So Beyond Pricing is a smart pricing tool. They connect to your Airbnb calendar and they price your calendar based on their data, day of the week, seasonality, hotel prices, big events, future, current, neighborhood occupancy, all of these different things. I recommend you use Beyond Pricing if you don't want to really get into the details. Beyond Pricing is it's a, it's kind of the starter pricer. It makes it really easy to go in, get started, and bam. Now, the downside of that is there's less customizations on Beyond Pricing but it has its place for sure. It makes it very simple. They do price calendars good, but if you're a really hands-on host and you want to, and you want to you know, make adjustments up and down here and there, there's going to be limited availability on Beyond Pricing. We'll get to that towards the end when I go over the customization section. On the dashboard here, bookings, this is interesting information. It tells you how many bookings you have in the next 14 days. That's obvious. It says it right there, but why is that important? Let's say you get an average booking of three days. That's about average on Airbnb, three days. That means if you're going for 100% occupancy, you're gonna get 10 bookings per month. That means in two weeks, you're gonna get five bookings. And that should be the rolling average, more or less. Every two weeks, you should get about five bookings. I look at on a weekly basis. Every week, you should be getting one to three bookings. Now, if you're getting more than that, you, you can understand how you might be underpriced. If you're getting less than that, you might understand that you're overpriced. It doesn't tell the whole story though because you could have gotten one long booking, which in this first listing has been, I got a 37 night booking. That means the next 37 nights, which is when most of my bookings come in, is not available. So this makes sense, but it's still useful information. The health score is a, is a staple of beyond pricing. This is what they pioneered. It tells you very easily and that's why I say Beyond Pricing is really good. It's, it's really good for the starters and the people who just want it to be as easy as possible, don't want to invest much time in learning a system. Well, health score is your score. It's going to tell you what, how you're doing based on your occupancy. So you don't have to worry about occupancy and where you're at. It's going to tell you. And on this particular listing, it says I'm good. And that 76 means that I am 76%, let's see, right, within 30 days, I'm 76% booked. That's a bit too high. Ideal is 46 and then in 90 days, I'm about right. So I'm getting a lot of points for 90 days occupancy, not so much for 30 days, but overall it's giving me a good occupancy. It's just kind of a quick number. Let's go down here at one of these, let's see, uh, this one has been, so this one's been turned off, this one's been turned off. The, oh, this one just turned back on here. So 
We can see we're 100% booked in the next 30 days. We did have a booking come in, and the next 90 days were 91% booked. It's actually blocked out a little bit, so they're counting blocked days as booked days. But you can kind of get the gist. It's a number that kind of tells you if you're too under-occupied or too over-occupied. This number is going to tell you that pretty clearly. Hit min means how many days out of the next 90 days is hitting your minimum. That's 3% in this case. And that can tell you if this number is too high, it can tell you that one of two things. One is that you're overpriced because a lot of, if you took off the minimum, beyond pricing would be telling you, hey, you're, you're actually, the price on this day should be below your minimum for a lot of the days. Oh, hey, can I ask you a favor? Click the red subscribe button below and the bell next to it for notifications because it will make me very happy and encourage me to make more videos. Thank you. It could also mean that your pricing is good, your minimum price is bad. Your pricing is good, let's say those dates that are above your minimum price, let's say those, those are getting booked out, but the dates that are hitting your minimum, they're not getting booked. That means your minimum price is too high. I would love to see here, tell me how many days have went by unbooked that were available at my minimum price that didn't get booked. If I see a trend, that tells me pretty clearly, ah, okay, my minimum price is too high, rather than looking at a future rate. Blocked here, 3% blocked in the next 90 days. That could be manually blocked by you. It could be blocked because it's booked on Airbnb or it could be blocked because it's uh, booked on another platform or, or your website. And finally, this 156 is the base price. 78 is minimum. We're gonna get into those details now. If you wanted to quickly change something, just click this adjust prices and a little tab will pop out to the right here allowing you to change your base and your minimum price. And in the upper right corner, you can use this to search anything that's already here. So if I wanted to search, for example, you know, the address or the title of the listing, we can do that. Okay, let's click into this listing and see what the details tell us. The first tab here, we'll go over these in order, chart, stats, market data, nearby listings and customized. The calendar very clearly shows you the calendar. The green dates mean they've already been booked. Successful booking on Airbnb. The red means that I've already done this. I've manually entered a price and you can manually enter a price just by clicking one or you can, and you can uh, override the price down here, increase by percent or set price to a certain number. You can also do this in a bulk transaction here if you, if you use this date range above. And finally, if you have an upcoming date or big event coming up, you can change the minimum night stay if we want to change it to one there. Save changes, all good. And if you scroll over one of these, they're going to tell you actually how the price came, where the price came from. So base price is 156 plus 23. That means it's in demand a little bit more than usual. And there's your price, 179. The chart is going to show you what my base price is, minimum, current, and predicted price. So this is interesting because I'm using right now a different third-party pricing partner. And so they're telling me that they are pricing my listing a lot higher, this brownish line up top here, than Beyond Pricing would be pricing my listing at this base price. I'm creating a tool right now where actually I'm going to take data from Price Labs, Wheelhouse, and Beyond Pricing. You can just enter your unique Airbnb URL and we'll get the data from each of those websites and we'll present it some, somehow like this, which kind of will show you which each service is pricing your listing at, and then you can make an informed decision that way instead of going to each website individually. When that is ready, I'll post a link up here or in the description down below. The stats here, I'm not gonna go over it too much. Again, I don't think that this is Beyond Pricing's strong suit. They make it very simple, or they always have historically in the past. Uh, so this data really isn't gonna be all that useful for users of Beyond Pricing. The only thing, I did notice this occupancy, that's cool. However, same with this average daily rate, that's great to compare yourself directly this year to last year. However, they need to, recommendation to be on pricing is they need to take this chart and, and move it over to the right here. Because me seeing my last year's daily rate compared to my future daily rate, which doesn't exist, isn't so helpful. But if July, June, June was all the way over here to the right, I could, I could then see historically where we're at and how we're doing. But same thing with occupancy. What would, be, what would be interesting for occupancy is they're showing me these, these uh, light gray lines. These are showing me occupancy for last, last year. Last year's already passed. What would be better is if they showed me on today's July 11th, on July 11th last year, how, where was my occupancy at for these future months? Now, that would be cool because you can see down here these small little 
uh, orange boxes, these are future occupancy current as it stands, which is 0% <laughs> so far. Okay, you can, again, you can ignore, ignore all this stuff. Average uh, stay length, that's kind of interesting just because we're in the middle of the pandemic. So we can see last year versus this year, it's, it's just shot up. And we can see average booking lead time this year has decreased. That makes sense. Average booking lead time is important to know because it tells you if your, if your average booking is coming within two weeks, within 15 days, that's important information to know because if you didn't know that and you didn't, in the next 30 days, you didn't have, you were only 20% occupied, you might freak out and lower your price, thus leaving a lot of money on the table because you didn't know that 20% booked at 30 days is appropriate for where you are in your market because most of the reservations are gonna come in right around that 15 day mark. I hope that makes sense. That's an important point that is gonna make you lose or make more money for basically just understanding your own market, which you should anyways. Post, post a comment if this section doesn't make sense and I will, I will type it out one more way and try and make it uh, make a little more sense. Yeah, I'm gonna skip all of this and we're gonna go up to the market data. So the market data, neighborhood occupancy, this again isn't so useful because it's showing me, the blue line is showing me his, historical occupancy from last year. And then it's the, the, the dark line is showing me future occupancy. But those things aren't really comparable in my mind. Let's see, average historical occupancy. Yeah, so what might be better, I would like to see here, I would like to see just showing me in general, a tip to be on pricing is I would like to know how are these numbers calculated? Neighborhood, is that is that one mile? Is that uh, 500 meters? Where exactly is that? Because depending on the neighborhood, my, my real neighborhood occupancy, which is your competition, your immediate competition occupancy could be different. And also this is just a general occupancy for the neighborhood. I would like to see, if you're watching this video, you're probably in the top percentile, top 10, top five percentile. I would like to see, all right, that's the neighborhood occupancy, but this is taken in the bad hosts and the great hosts. How about the great hosts? Where's their occupancy at? That's what I want to compare myself with. And I think there's some other information here that I'm gonna skip. Nearby listings is pretty cool. This tells you your competition on, on, on Airbnb. Now, the one thing that would be nice is if I were to zoom in, because competition on, on the south side of the river is not my true competition, it's, it's on the, the north side or the east side of this river here, but if I zoom in, I notice that the listings don't change. So it would be cool if when I zoom in, I would get more of my Airbnb listings here. But nevertheless, it kind of shows you your competition. You can go on your competition and try, try, if you're not doing well, try and identify what are they doing better than me. Though I just realized that I, you, oh, view on. Okay, I didn't think you could click it, but you can view on. And if you're using HomeAway VRBO, you can, you can click here. This one looks to be the same on both. So customize is... Well, how you customize your prices, quite simply. There's gonna be five of them, as we can see here. So the, again, the, the positive side of this is they make it easy. They're not, they're not confusing you with a bunch of different customizations that you're not sure if, whether you should or you shouldn't use. And then you, if you, if you wanna use them, you gotta learn how to use them and there's a risk of using them incorrectly. Beyond Pricing takes that away. They just say, hey, if you want a solid pricer and you don't want to have to worry about all these customizations, you just want us to do it good from the start. Now, of course, that's an extreme and not super realistic. So they have added in some really basic customizations, minimum and maximum prices. And all of these customizations you can do seasonally or annually. Now, I've already filled this out a little bit for my minimum price. I just said, hypothetically, let's say my minimum price in my slow season, I'm going to lower it down to three bucks at 75. The suggestion here is don't forget, it looks like you have to redo this every year. It would be nice to tell beyond pricing just, you know, from November 17th to March 18th every year is my slow season. So keep that, those dates, no matter the year at minimum price. If we scroll down to minimum stays, it's gonna be the same thing. So I added my minimum stay here. This one is important, reduce minimum stays to fill gaps. Now, what this means is if you have a four night minimum stay, but you have a four night booking and a four night booking, and then you have one, two, three days available on your calendar, that with a four night minimum cannot be booked. But what I'm telling Beyond Pricing to do is make that available. Make that minimum now three nights. So I recommend everyone put that on if at all possible, if your cleaners can handle it. The next one is the same as above, just change in seasonal minimum, minimum rate. Uh, just remember to do it each year. 
and the last minute minimum stay. So if we want, let's say if we're within, within you know, seven, eight, eight days, then I want to change my minimum to one night. Last minute discounts. This one is okay. It's, it just lets you do it in a stepwise format. It also, it's a little misleading, last minute discounts. You can also increase. So it's last minute discounts and future increases. And it's, it's quite self-explanatory. Decrease by X percentage for the next X amount of days. And it's, it's represented graphically here. Now, how you know you need to do this is if you have good occupancy in the next 30, 60 days, but as soon as it gets to 5, 10, 15 days out, you're not getting many bookings. Many bookings are passing without getting booked. Well, if they're passing at your minimum, then you need to lower your minimum. But if they're not passing at your minimum, you need to discount more. And that's how this comes in. None of these tools, by the way, none of these smart pricing tools are set it and forget it. They're all going to require a little bit of manipulation and customization to fit your specific market. Check-in and check-out days. If you only wanted a guest to check-in or check-out certain days, you could do that here. A neat feature of Beyond Pricing is you can add team members. So to do that, click on your profile down here to the left and then click Team. And if you wanted to add someone, you just simply put in their name here and then give them some sort of access here. So the pricing here is 1% or 1.25. I suggest you go 1%. It's an annual commitment. That's 1% of your total uh, gross revenue coming in on Airbnb. Starter is 0.25% more. You could pay month to month though. However, there's an implementation fee. I'm not sure how much that is, but it really does make sense. You're gonna have to have a smart price for unless your minimum is like two weeks, three weeks and more. At that point, smart pricing becomes less, um, less important because people aren't booking on a, sh a short-term basis for events and whatnot. I'm gonna link a code here, which is gonna give you 30 days free plus $30 credit to Beyond Pricing. And let me know if you use Beyond Pricing, you plan to use them, you have any questions about this tutorial, or you want me to cover other tools, smart prices or anything, just tell me the name of that tool in the comments and I'll definitely try and cover that tool and I'll even try and secure you guys a discount code as usual. Until next time, happy hosting.